Here we go. Hope you've had a, a nice break. But uh, we've been talking about transformation, so I want to refresh your brain with a little bit of a review. By the time I get done writing these, you should be able to name the three types of transformations. So that's one thing that you should know already. The first one is translation. Hopefully you remember the other two by now. Then there was rotation. And the last one should be in your mind right now. And that's reflection. So you need to know those three translations. Now let's go ahead and talk a little bit about uh, there's several things you need to be able to do with transformations. The first thing we talked about was being able to identify what kind of a translation it is a transformation it is if I give you a picture. Now on this particular one here uh, you can see that A translates to A prime, B translates to B prime, and C translates to C prime. The second transformation we look at is uh, essentially one of rotation. Now in a rotation translation uh, I have a new circle tool. Let's see if I can make this thing work right. Oh, uh, well, never mind. That didn't work. I'll have to practice that a little bit more. On a uh, rotation, basically you have this triangle ABC rotating around point D. So we essentially get uh, point B rotating in a circle with a radi constant radius around point D and we get point A rotating in a constant radius around point D as well and that's a horrible looking circle but uh, you get the point hopefully you remember the exercise on that uh, the last one then is reflection and this is where we take triangle ABC and we reflect it across the point and hopefully you remember that you take the perpendicular distance to the line and double it and that's where your reflected point goes. So C would move three squares and then three more squares. A moves four squares or five squares and then moves five more squares. So that's what a reflection is. Now I'm not going to go through this because it's in your notes but you need to be able to stare at those figures and decipher uh, the difference between three just by looking at them. Remember, you've got two criteria. One is looking at what we called connecting lines. Those are the, the blue lines I drew, like here and like here. And the other is to be able to look at the sequence. And by sequence, we're talking about the order uh, that the vertices run in. Notice here, if I go uh, clockwise, I go CB, I go CBA. Well, it's not writing here. I go C prime, B prime, A prime, and here I go C, B, A. So those sequence, that's what we're talking about is the sequence of, of uh, vertexes. So it's the first thing you ought to be able to do is identify those transformations by looking at those two things. If you don't have that in your notes, make sure you get the book at, in this classroom and get that in there. Now we also talked about ordered pair rules. Now these ordered pair rules come in a general form you ought to remember that too. Uh, for the sake of review, in case you missed that class, uh, they come in this form X. Actually, let's do this a little bit different. Uh, we'll change color of my pen so you can see what I'm talking about. This comes in the form XY transforming into some new value of X and some new value of Y. Okay. Now, if you look at this general form, there were five cases that we looked at. One was translation, one was 180 degree rotation about the origin, the third one was reflection across the x-axis, there was reflection across the y-axis, and there was reflection across the line y equals x. So you should have those in your notes. If you don't, you want to pause it here, make sure you get placeholders for that. And uh, when you get back to the classroom, go look up those general form equations so that you have them in your head. Uh, I'll give you the easy one. And that's essentially, uh, for translation, we went from x, 
y to x plus h. Remember that was the horizontal distance that the uh, new the the uh, translated vertex moved, and y plus k. That's the type of form you ought to have for all of these. So you ought to be able to fill in for all of these. What is that general form equation that tells you it's a reflection? That allows you to quickly draw them without putting too much thought into it. Now, there's a new thing that you're going to need to know for class on Monday. And that is composition of transformations. Now, by composition of transformations, I simply mean doing multiple transformations, moving the object multiple times. We'll talk today about just two moves, although this could be any number of uh, sequence of moves. If I started out with an object and I translated it, say that I moved it over here uh, where I have now moved this 10 squares to the right. So that would be a translation, horizontal translation. That means that uh, the general rule or the rule for that would be xy translates to x plus 10 comma and I leave y constant right now I then say I translate it again and this time I move it um, I have a good way to do this I'll show it here I move this thing down nine squares if I counted right so I believe that's nine squares that means on my second move, I now have a rule that says x comma y, which leaves x constant and has y plus 9. Right? That probably ran off your screen a little bit. Let me see if I can't move that over here so that nobody gets lost as to what's going on. Okay? There's my general rule. Now, I can go on in here and simply say well suppose I wanted to go from here to here all in one move I can write that as one simple rule and that's simply x comma y translates to uh, the first rule which was moving x plus 10 that's a 10, that was a horrible 10 x plus 10 and the second move moved me down and that would be my y plus 9. So this here then becomes my... Uh, I had a composition of transformations that could be summarized as one translation. So obviously I'm not going to uh, give you two translations and expect you to decipher if you don't see the middle step. I don't need you to decipher that middle step. But if I give you two translations, I may ask you to restate them as a more simpler one-step operation. So there's an example. Now, the best example I can give you is why I bother with this. So we have a thing called a glide reflection. Now, a glide, glide reflection is simply a translation followed by a reflection. Pretty much like footsteps. And that's the illustration I want to use. So if you take a look, hopefully you admire my artwork, if you take a step and you take another step, you can kind of see that uh, that foot moved forward and then was reflected across the line. And you have another foot step followed by another foot step. And you can kind of see that you know they follow a line, but uh, this particular foot here slides forward, not quite that far, and then translates down to uh, effectively lay over the top of this guy right here. So these, this reflects over that line and you can kind of see that it uh, follows a line down the rest of the way, follows a line down the rest of the way. And that's the reflection on the other side. So we call that a glide reflection. Um, and I want you to be able to make use of that or if I tell you here's a glide reflection, you should be able to draw it and move forward. Now, that's a very brief introduction to what composition is, but it's really that simple. There's really only a couple of things that you have to do. So take a look at this 
and see if you can't reflect this triangle across these two parallel lines. Just stop for a moment, sketch it on your paper, uh, pause this video, and see if you can't sketch the reflection of ABC over line A, we'll call it right here, and then reflect it again. Take that reflected image, which would now be A prime, B prime, C prime, and reflect that uh, over this line so you end up with an image all the way over here. Go ahead and do that. When you get done, uh, what I want you to be able to do is to say what single transformation would express what you end up with. So do it. See if you can't come back with that answer. Uh, we'll cover this in class, so come to class with questions if that makes no sense. All right, now that you're back, I want you to try it again. This time, I want you to uh, do the same thing. Uh, I want you to take an image, this triangle, and I want you to reflect it across two intersecting lines. So instead of two parallel lines, I want you to reflect it across two intersecting lines. So uh, take this triangle and reflect it across this line so you end up with an image over here. And then take that reflected image, uh, sorry, take that uh, Take that image and reflect it across this line again so you end up with an image down here in this space. Uh, and be able to express that as a, a single transformation and see what kind of transformation you come up with. I recommend that you go ahead and label the axes so that you can uh, keep track of what's what. So probably want to call this A, B, C. All right, and that's pretty much what's going to cover taking care of transformations or composition of transformations. So, enjoy yourself. Bye.